I'm Linda Ann Smith at Studio ABC. Today I'll be working with Pauver Paul to make a sculpture of a Native American girl. My first step is to start with a wire armature. Uh, I'm twisting together two wires that are approximately 30 inches long. Normally I would make them probably about 20 inches long, but I need some extra wire on the bottom of these. And I'm, I'm attaching these towards the top of it, not right in the middle because I'm going to use the bottom of the wire to attach to a base and if I were just uh, using it freestanding then I wouldn't need so much extra wire. But I twist those together to make the backbone. Then use a shorter piece of wire and twist it together to form a head. On my backbone section I bent the wires out at right angles to form arms. Then take the wires that extend from the head and neck piece and wrap them around the wires that are going to serve as arms. Those leftover wires from the head section can be bent down and to form a torso and you just take a little bit of tape just to keep them in place. I'm forming just a basic uh, armature for any type of sculpture that you may have had experience with in the past. So if you've had experience making figures maybe with clay or with paper mache, then you may already know how to make an armature. Pull your long leg wires back into place and here's what we have. And again, my legs are way too long on purpose because I'm going to attach it to a base. I'm bending out the shoulders where I want them to be. Then I'll go to the ends of the arms to turn up a little loop on each arm to form hands. Once upon a time, this was my base that I had for a ceramic dancing couple, and it got broken, and I saved it because it's a nice, heavy base, has a lot of weight to it, and that's why I have extra wire here on the legs. I'm just attaching it the best way I can. I'm not, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be beautiful, but I'm going to attach it so that it will work for me and uh, coming around and looping it so that it will be sturdy, doing what I have to do to make it stand up because all this is going to get covered. You're not going to see this anyway. As a multimedia artist who's always uh, happy to have found objects, I don't throw away a whole lot of things. I find a way to use them in my art. So I'm really happy to find a way to use this base. If you have a base you're attaching it to that's different, uh, like this one is, from just an ordinary base, then you will have to kind of wing it because there's no specific instructions for push this down in this hole or attach it to that, uh, e that extension or whatever. You'll have to use what's there available for you. I'm, I'm even like pushing it down inside of that previous sculpture. But just use what's available to you to make it as sturdy as possible the basic bone structure for the figure now and I need to put some meat on its bones. So I do that by wrapping with just ordinary aluminum foil. Where I want bulk and uh, sturdiness, I wad it up and then I wrap around, kind of squeezing and molding it as I go. Continue all the way up the figure. I'll turn this sideways on my tabletop so you can take a look at what I'm doing to the top part of it, the torso. I'm building that up. I will be building up the arms, the torso, the head, everything with the foil, covering the entire wire structure. The arms are okay where they are right now, but I'll need to make a decision before I start putting on the Paul layers as to where I want those arms to actually be placed. I'm still working on building up the head at this point. I have a few pieces of loose foil that I'm going to probably just push down with a little bit of tape. I'll cover the wire on her hand and continue to shape the aluminum foil and I'll be ready to start the pauper paw process. You can take an old worn out dingy t-shirt and the softer the material the better. The more it's worn the better and I'm just cutting off little strips of this to use to structure the body. Here you see where I take down the floppy ends of the aluminum foil and now I'm ready to use my pauper paw. It is bronze colored pauper paw. Be sure to stir your pauper paw before you begin. When it sits for a while the color settles to the bottom. Even when 
you've shaken it and you think it's all mixed up, be sure to take like an old uh, uh, chopstick or some kind of stirring stick and stir that up because it's thick on the bottom. I can feel that with this wooden stick that I'm using to stir and stir it up real good so that all the color and all the chemicals are mixed throughout. I believe I could probably clean the pover pot up off of my work surface, but I put plastic over it because that just saves me a big step. It's going to get messy, so if you don't like a mess, you probably won't like this, but it's so much fun to play with that I, uh, I just put on what I call my art uniform, which is an old ragged shirt covered with paint, and I just get busy. I put the pauper pole, put the strips of cloth down into the pauper pole in a plastic bowl because pauper pole is uh, known not to stick to plastic. And then I just start wrapping these strips around to give a full covering all the way up and down. I started at her waist, I'm going down, and then I'll start up at the shoulders and finish. I did notice that the, I probably kept my strips a little bit thin this first time that I'm doing a sculpture because the t-shirt strips try to roll on you, especially if you put any pressure on them at all as you're pulling them out of the pauper paw. But I don't think that'll be a huge problem later. I'm gonna be able to cover that with a, a disguising layer. In order for you to see her head, I had to move my camera up so you also get to see my lovely art uniform. And um, I'm not going for detail here at all. I'm just going to make general shapes that form a head and form the hair. I'll share with you that I'm very new at working with Pover Paul, and yet I feel like my attempts are turning out successful. Uh, I'm trying different methods, I'm playing with it, I'm putting uh, the uh, fabric on the doll and then try stretching it around and adding the Pover Paul after I get it on the doll. I've tried several things with this just in this one project and it's easier than I thought it would be. Also, I've got it all up and down my arms and all over my hands, and as I warned you earlier, it's, it's not an easy project to keep totally clean. So if, you know, getting messy and getting into your art is kind of my thing anyway, but I want to be sure I can get it off of my hands. I want to go someplace once in a while. So it... I'll assure you that it's very easy to get off. Just warm soap and water will take it off or just peeling it off like kids love to, to rub Elmer's glue on their hands and then peel it off. Well, that's kind of what this is like. Just peel it off. It comes right off in a great big sheet usually and uh, the rest of it will come off with warm soap and water. No big deal at all. This is my disguising layer that I talked about earlier. I'm using large pieces of the t-shirt material and applying it and you see how many seams and edges and everything you can see right there on the front of her blouse. Well, that doesn't look attractive to me. I like the smoother lines. I want it to look um, a little bit more minimalist. So I will be covering up all of these wrinkles and all of these areas that have uh, too many edges on them with larger sheets of the t-shirt material. And after that, I will need to give it a drying time, get it nice and dry, because the last step that I'll use with Pover Paul will be to add a shawl. This is a little Native American character, and I want to show her dancing with her shawl. The next day, I use some of Pover Paul's stockinette uh, fabric. It's 100% cotton and I dipped it right into the clear pauper pole and used it for draping, making her a shawl. And I thought I was finished, so I took her outdoors to dry. Sometimes it's best, though, to walk away from your work for a little while and reevaluate with fresh eyes when you come back. And when I came back, I already knew that her dress was not necessarily a traditional style, but I wanted something to say Native American. So one of the things that I really needed was fringe on the shawl and some dry brushing to bring out these features a little better. I let her shawl dry to a leather hard stage and brought her back in the house and began adding fringe. Now I just used plain ordinary thread, but I used a large eye needle and threaded that with four strands of thread 
inside the needle's eye, like this. That meant when it came down double, I had eight pieces of thread hanging down to make the fringe. It was a labor-intensive procedure for sure, but worth every minute when I finished. This was a very time-consuming process. I went through and would pull it up to about the length I wanted, and then I would clip it off to make sure all the ends were even, and tie it in a knot, and then proceed on to the next piece of fringe. The things that I learned to speed it up was that if I just left the fringe a little too long and then clipped several of them at the same time instead of trying to clip each one as I went, it, it went a little more speedily for me. But I kept telling myself, the people who make real Native American shawls do these one strand at a time and it's very time consuming. I did a bit of dry brushing uh, on her with primary elements mixed with pauperpol in some cases and other, other cases I mixed it with a medium. It just kind of depended on what was in front of me. I paid attention to more details. If I was going to do all that fringe I might as well make it look right. So I beaded a little necklace for her and added a feather in her hair, a little beaded feather. and. Uh, this puffer paw actually acted as a glue. I put it behind the beads, pressed it onto her head, and it glued it right there where I wanted it. That way, uh, I used the same color that I had used to make the original doll, and there wasn't a lot of uh, cleanup work to do in case the glue leaked. I considered putting a clear puffer paw on the fringe to hold it in place where I wanted it, but for right now, I'm enjoying watching it blow in the wind, so I'm probably not going to put this outdoors anyway. It's probably going to go inside my home, so I think I'll just leave it like it is. And there's a close-up of her feathers and beads, and I think she is a Native American now. I'll give this a few days to dry, and then I'll put a protective varnish over the entire thing except for the fringe. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see me use more pauper pile in the future, give me a thumbs up so that I'll know that you like it. Uh, also, if you'll share this on your social media, make comments, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please do so. Check out the description box below the video, and I'll have the links for pauper Paul products and my personal links where you can find me. Thank you so much for your time and for watching.